Her life changed in March 1990 when she tested positive for HIV after giving birth to her second child at the Pumwani Hospital. And 31 years later, Patricia Acero still remembers every detail of what happened that fateful month. And uh, I remember my, father, my mother saying that maybe somebody had bewitched me. And I was even taken to see uh, a medicine man somewhere, I think in uh, somewhere near the city stadium. And he said, ah, he touched my hand and said, yes, there's something, I don't know what he said. But then he gave us concussions. We came back with them and my mother boiled and I never took those things. Eventually, she gathered the strength to adjust to her new normal and with family support, counseling and a strict medical regime, she has lived a fulfilling life despite the challenges. Uh, I've taken the medication and right now you can say that uh, I'm undetectable that my viral load is undetectable and I cannot transmit to a sexual partner. Now, many living with HIV have experienced seasons of highs and lows, the highs of medical breakthroughs that made the virus seem beatable, to the lows of disappointment as medical trials failed to yield positive results. What excited me was the Arthur Bell. I had just gotten uh, uh, to know that I was infected. So sitting down and watching the launch at Kemri, that is something that really excited me. But my major concern at that particular time was, would I be able to afford it? Because uh, my understanding at that time was that it was going for 40,000. People spent money on it. I know that people sold land, people sold property, but they never get got well. I know there was a time when uh, it was said that if you take your urine, the early morning urine, that it was a, uh, that it was a treatment. And I'm telling you, my dear, just the other day, we had the same in Tanzania, where everybody rushed for the bubble cup. I know that quite a number of people stopped taking ARVs, a number of people stopped taking TB medication, and they died. Globally, there are 38 million people living with HIV. And even though the media headlines are dominated by COVID-19-related news, the HIV pandemic is still very real. For example, back in 2019, 1.7 million people contracted the virus and 690,000 people died from HIV-related causes. Professor Matilu Mwao is an infectious disease specialist at Kemri, and his PhD thesis focused on the search for a HIV vaccine. At his Kemri laboratory, he sheds light on why 40 years later, there is still no approved vaccine. Initially, people thought making an HIV vaccine was going to be slam dunk, easy. Uh, because they thought, ah, because HIV can stimulate neutralizing antibodies, therefore it should be easy. The fact of the matter is it has been so hard because the place that you need to neutralize is hidden in the envelope and you need to expose it. That exposing, somebody needs to come up with that kind of science there, right? Like for coronavirus, nobody imagined that within a year you could have a vaccine. We were just lucky. We were just lucky that the spike protein was just there stimulating immune responses and it was just exposed. If God forbid the spike protein was, or there was no immunogenic, uh, strongly immunogenic part of that envelope would have been in big trouble. In the age of the internet, conspiracy theories have multiplied. And when it comes to HIV AIDS, there have been many regarding its origin and others seemingly justifying why it's taken nearly half a century to find a vaccine, let alone a cure. Those theories gained great attraction last year when a COVID-19 vaccine was discovered in months, and not just one, several. The amount of money that has been poured into HIV vaccines development is stupendous amounts of money. The issue is the science. The issue is just the science. So for conspiracy theorists, they should also understand that scientists struggle very much to find something to attack in the HIV virus. Coincidentally, the decades-long search for a HIV vaccine actually made it easier for the discovery of the COVID-19 vaccines. The HIV pandemic is the one that drove people to invest so much in molecular biology, including sequencing. So when the coronavirus outbreak occurred, within a very few days, people already knew how the, the genome of that virus is organized because they had sequencers in place already. 
Kenya has been involved in several vaccine trials over the years in conjunction with the United States Center for Disease Control and the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative, amongst other collaborations. Professor Moore believes a breakthrough is possible, but as to when, now that is anyone's guess. It would be unbelievable because you can imagine how many people have been killed by HIV since the pandemic began. How many... How much has been spent on antiretroviral therapy? Living with HIV is not a very, it's not a very easy thing, because you get different types of conditions, and also the drugs are not friendly. See Ugali, there's a toxicity. We have some of us are having organ failures. We're having different things. So I would go for prevention. If we could get a vaccine that would prevent people from getting the HIV virus, I would go for it. Wahiga Mwaura, Citizen TV.